In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You heard it in the Collect of the Day. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you. I trust God. I put my trust in God some of the time. I think, I think I do that. I'm sure I did it this morning sometime, maybe earlier. Or let me put it this way, I know it's very important to me. The question is, how often do I really do it? And that may be a question that you have. And some of you may in fact put your whole trust in God a whole lot more than I do, or maybe less, it doesn't matter, it's our own individual choice and way that we live into our spiritual journey. But the key word is trust. Trusting in God is the most important issue of our faith journey. Really the most important thing we can do. It's like, it's like a starting point. It's like a cornerstone. It's like, it's like the goal line. I mean, it's, it's all over. It's something we've really got to focus on. And we all do it, we all do it in our own way. But it keeps popping up in, on the Sunday lessons. I mean, I think I've already preached on this once over the past 12 months. I mean, it keeps coming up. Why? Because it's so important. We need to be encouraged to put our whole trust in God. That is huge for most of us. We've been studying the Old Testament recently, going through this book, The Path, or Journey Through the Bible, and uh, we'll get to Christian scriptures later, but we're in Hebrew scriptures, and boy, is this a story of the Israelites, um, leaders that came up and trusted God. They were not, none of them were perfect. None of them were perfect. And some of them were able to go back to trust God. I mean, Abraham trusted God to lead his family into the, into the desert, into nowhere, into wilderness, into a new land. David trusted God to go up against Goliath and to lead a nation. Solomon trusted God to do the same thing and ask God for the wisdom to do that. And David and Solomon were flawed characters. They made some huge mistakes in their lives. However, what is common in, their, in the telling of their story in Scripture is that they kept coming back to trusting God. That's why, that's why they're so important for us to look at. And in Hebrew Scriptures, in the Old Testament, they keep making the point that when the people, when the leaders do in fact trust God, good things happen. And when the people, when the leaders do not put their trust in God, things go wrong. And it's not about, it's not about rewarding those who are trusting God. It's, it's about where are those leaders and where are those people in their journey? Where do they put God in their lives. And when they do put God as number one, when they too put God as the primary source of their being, as the primary person in whom they can put their trust, whom they can trust, they're in a different place. They're, they have a different perspective on life and they're willing to undergo lots of challenge. And that's why it's so important for us. Every one of us meets challenges every day. And we could say that we'll handle those. We're tough, you know, we're smart, we're quick, we're sharp. We'll take care of this. But, but that's not the faith journey. I mean, that's, being, that's using the skills that God has given us to get through challenges, which we certainly have been trained to do, and we have survived to this point. But there's another level to our lives, and the level is one of faith. And when we can, in fact, first go to God and say, God, here I am. I trust you. I'm in a bind. 
and I need guidance. Now that's a whole lot deeper than figuring, out, figuring it all out on our own. And it is a fact that when we put ourselves in God's presence, our hearts open up, our minds open up, we become more comfortable with who we are, and we see lots more potential and possibilities with our lives, and things work out. You see how, impo how important it is? And yet I bet, I bet that none of, well, again, I cannot speak for everybody else, but I know that God wants us to put more emphasis on trusting God. It pleases God, and it's good for God's people. So we need to do it. Paul tells us in, in this reading that um, there's nothing that can separate us from God. I mean, any kind of calamity, calamity um, any, any challenges that come down the road, um, convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. St. Paul is saying God is always there. Always. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. Always there. The catch is, do we love and trust God so that we can access, believe in, and, and receive that love of God? That is always the human question. To what degree do we really trust God to lead us in our living? Matthew, you know, is a primary collection of parables, and we've got seven in this lesson today. I'm just going to look at one. They're all, they're all talking about the same thing in different ways, and I'd like to say they're all talking about trusting God. But especially this one about the mustard seed. Um, it's a little bit overly dramatic, probably. I don't know that the mustard seed is actually the smallest seed in... I don't think it is. But it's pretty small. It's pretty small. And um, I don't think the mustard seed actually grows into trees, but it, does grow, but it does grow into bushes, maybe six, eight feet. But that's just technical stuff. The story's pretty amazing. It says that a, a farmer, or it could be one of us in our backyard, goes to the place where crops are and, and drops a seed. One seed. One seed. I mean, it doesn't do anything to cover it up or water it or fertilize it or put lime down. None of that stuff. Just drops a seed and the rest is totally God's work. God's, the work of God's creation. And the message that I hear there is, yes, in our relationship with God, we play a role. We have to initiate something like, God, here I am. I need your help. God, here I am. I want to participate in your role and your purpose for this world. And then you know what we're supposed to do in our trust is just to back up and listen. Not try to take over. Just to back up and listen to what, to what God tells us to do, how God leads us, how God invites us into God's purpose for this world. See, it's about trusting when we trust God to take over, amazing things do happen. And all of, these, all of these parables in this gospel reading today are about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God or the reign of God, whatever you want to call it, which, is, which needs maybe a little bit of explanation because it's about that, and it's really about how we choose to acknowledge and be a part of being in the presence of God. And it's, it's really an amazing thing because the kingdom of heaven, as you know, it's, it's, it's very near. It's come very near to us. It's in our heart. The kingdom of God is here with us right now. The kingdom of God is, is, is all over throughout the entire universe. The kingdom of God 
rests with us in the present. The kingdom of God is eternal and timeless. The kingdom of God has to do with us recognizing and participating with God's will for justice, peace, and reconciliation in God's world. The kingdom of God is about realizing that God is at the center of all life. See, it's all of that. It's we humans, through these stories, these parables, these interesting stories, trying to learn more and to grasp the whole concept of that kingdom of God in which we are invited to participate and about which Jesus preached so much. So, how do we get there? How do we get there to be in the presence of God in that kingdom, in that reign, in that space, in, in time, in the present and forever, where in fact we feel like we are with God and working with our Creator. In a previous sermon, as I said, I know I, I shared this with you, and it's such an important prayer beginner. In this moment, God, I put my whole trust in you. Do you remember that? In this moment, God, I put my whole trust, trust in you. Or in this moment, I put my whole trust in God. Well, what I want to do as a way for reflecting on this is in the stillness of this place, in the sacredness of this place in this time, I want us to close our eyes and to say that, say that sentence. And it's not making a promise for the rest of the day, but it is making a promise or, a, or an intent for right now. And my hunch is, my hunch is, you'll feel something. Just say the words together and then you can do, say them on your own silently. In this moment, I put my whole trust in God. Amen. Um,